So good morning, Unity of Kalamazoo family, friends, and the world. Welcome. We are a positive path for spiritual living, and your soul is always welcome here. Thank you for joining us today. As we continue to keep each other safe during this global health pandemic, please continue to take care of yourself and others. And now, as we begin our opening song, I invite you to lovingly send energy to your Unity friends and Unity family. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, talking to me. Talking to the children playing happily, talking to the captive praying to be free. Talking to the one who's down on bended knee. I know spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, and yeah, talking to me. Talking to the robin in the redwood tree. Talking to the dolphin in the deep blue sea. Talking to the crocodile and honeybee. And I know spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, yeah. Spirit is talking, talking to me. Talking about the joy that's there for us to see. It's talking about our faith and hope and charity. Talking about a truth that lasts eternally. And I know spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking, spirit is talking, spirit is talking, talking to me. Spirit is talking. Spirit is talking, yeah, spirit is talking, talking to me. And so now we begin to move ourselves into a time of meditation. We invite you to find a seat wherever you are and let the music lull you in into a time of meditation and peace.
I've got a new day down in my soul. Yes, I've got a new And so we move into our meditation, floating on the words and the music. And we begin with the reading of today's daily word for November the 15th. And the word for today is kindness. And the affirmation is, I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. The word kindness triggers feelings of warmth, connection, and love in my heart. I smile as I recall ways that friends and family members and others have shown me kindness. I feel again the gratitude and blessing I experience in those moments. Gratitude, love, and a beautiful awareness of connection fill my heart and mine in a remarkably similar way when I remember kindnesses I've shared. The movement of electrons through a wire creates a current, a flow. As kindness moves from person to person, it creates a flow of divine love. Both giving and receiving are essential to this current of love. So I look for opportunities to share acts of kindness. I welcome with a graceful heart the kindness others share with me. And from Micah chapter 6 verse 8, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. I invite you now, if you haven't already done so, to just close your eyes and settle into this moment, into this space, 
into this time. For we know that in every moment, every space, and every time, there exists the presence of God. We invite that presence to be with us in a way that we can touch it, we can feel it, we can know that God is there. Whatever is going on in the world around us, we just take a breath, breathe in the divine light and love of God, and then breathe out any worries or concerns. For centered in God, there is always peace and there is always hope. We take a moment to just be quiet for a minute in our busy world, to just be quiet and allow spirit to speak those loving, calming words, to send us loving, calming vibrations as we realize that we are never alone. We are always in the presence of God. And as we feel that presence, we go into a time of prayer. As we offer prayers for our world and all that is happening. We pray for our own spiritual community as well. And we send out prayers for our beloved longtime congregant, Lucille Lewis, who at the age of 102, made her transition. We bless her for her years of service as a part of the prayer group. Indeed, she was one of its founders. We bless her ongoing soul and her family. And we bless all of those in our congregation that loved her, that are mourning her. We pray for healing. We pray for peace. And we trust that God's divine guidance is at work in our world today. As we hear good news about the possibility of a vaccine, we trust that healing is on the way. That we can trust in divine order and know that we are safe and secure in God's love. And for this, we say, thank you, God. So it is. And so we let it be. Amen. I just offer this music this morning in gratitude for our veterans and for our beautiful country, the amber waves of grain as they truly are in full spectrum this time of year when we see the fall harvest coming in and recognize that's truly a blessing when it arrives and sustains us. Just 
sisterhood from sea to shining sea. So, the title of my talk today is Chaos to Community. But first, I want to thank John and Carolyn for that lovely rendition of America, especially today. So last week, we talked about how wild disorder or chaos can create panic or fear. But we also noted that wild disorder appears within an otherwise orderly system and that what appears to be a disorderly system, there are elements of unexpected order there. And we call that divine order. We can't always know how or what or when, but we trust divine order to bring out the highest good. So I have to say I am personally glad that the election is over. This has been a very difficult time for our country and the world. But I'm thankful that the democratic process has worked again. There still seems to be some chaos, but I trust divine order to take us to the next level. As we prepare to build back better with a new president-elect and vice president-elect. So my scriptural references for the service today are two, one from the book of Romans and one from the book of 1 Corinthians. So from Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 5, we read, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one, the one. And we are also members of one another. The second scripture is similar, but it adds a little bit more. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 13. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body though many are one body. So it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, servants or free, and all were made to drink of the one spirit. So these scriptures describe the church as one body. In other words, the body is an awesome example of a community working together. The human body's 50 trillion cells form a community. Each cell makes a contribution to the overall health of the body. A community is similar because a community is an organization committed to supporting a shared vision. Bruce Lipton, a leader in mind-body biology, says that the more the cells of your body or community work together, the more powerful and healthy the whole system becomes. So we want our community of cells working in harmony. He talks about, and I'm using this as a comparison of the body and the cells in the body to our own community, to our own world. He says, if our cells are living in harmony, we express health. If they are in disharmony, then we manifest disease. He says that health issues are a sign of our cellular community that it's not in harmony. He says that this is a metaphor for what is going on globally. So what's driving the disharmony in our world? What's driving the disharmony in our world is a sense of separation. 
And I know you've heard this before, but this is one of those spiritual truths that all walks of faith espouse. That if we had a different sense about ourselves, if we saw ourselves as part of the one, the many of us as a part of the one, we would not have this sense of separation. And so you want to recognize that this separation really leads to disharmony. We want to get an understanding, and then we want to personally have our own determination to correct, to adjust, and to recalibrate, to bring ourselves in harmony with one another, with the divine mind, with the divine plan, and with divine order. So as we look at the body as a community, and all people as members of the global community, Bruce Lipton offers us some insight. He says that 5% of our mind is controlled by creative conscious mind. He says the other 95% comes from subconscious programming. So your conscious mind can be filled with wishes and desires and ideas, but the programming running your subconscious mind does not support them. You can have aspirations, but your aspirations may not be compatible with your programming. So when your aspirations are not compatible with your programming, when your creative conscious mind is not compatible with your subconscious mind, then you tend to give up or sabotage your own success. Take, for example, if someone offers you an opportunity and you like the idea, but then you say, no, I don't think so. And you do this because it's out of your comfort zone. You don't know anyone else that's doing it. It doesn't fit your norm. And so you pass the opportunity by. He tells us that our life is a printout of our programming. So 95% of how you are showing up in life comes from the program in your subconscious mind. That 5% of creative consciousness works for us and we can bring some things easily into our reality because our conscious mind supports that existence. But there are other things that we struggle with because of our programming. Our subconscious programming does not support our wishes. Our subconscious is not on board. But he says that we can reprogram our subconscious mind. First, we must realize that we are programmed and that we are struggling. And what are the limits that are causing us to struggle. Sometimes within us, we are holding back. There's something holding us back from being all that we can be to fully, fully live, and even to engage in new things, meet new people, try new opportunities. So sometimes it's your subconscious programming that holds you back. But the good news is, is that you can rewrite the program to support more empowering beliefs. So how do you rewrite your program? How do you reprogram your subconscious mind? It takes effort and a willingness to change. He says that prayer and meditation are good, but they must be repeated we must consciously and repeatedly visualize what we want. Sometimes we may pray once for a thing, and when it doesn't happen, we get frustrated thinking that God doesn't hear our prayer. But he says that we must consciously and repeatedly visualize what we want and hold that in our heart and in our mind. That we are to radiate thoughts that resonate and vibrate energetically with the thoughts that we want to bring into our reality. So we can't pray for our wants or needs, focusing on what we don't have. He calls that victim prayer. 
when you pray, focusing on what you don't have, but you're hoping for the best that somehow, miraculously, your prayer will be answered. He says a more excellent way, a better way, is to focus on appreciation and gratitude. To thank God for a wonderful life. Instead of thinking that you don't have enough, or I wish I had more money, or I wish I had a better house, or I wish I had a better life, you focus on the fact and give thanks to God for your wonderful life. And this attracts more positive experiences into your life. He talks about affirmative prayer. He says that positive prayer enhances our physiology, our biology, and our behavior. That we can heal through the power of the mind. Now, this is a basic concept in unity, that thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. That the thoughts that we think outpicture in our lives. That the more positive our thoughts are, the more positive things we manifest in our world. So we can heal through the power of the mind. He says that negative thoughts release negative chemistry, and that can lead to disease and even death. So we have to watch our thoughts. So this is not new, but we want to look at it in a different way from a place of reprogramming ourselves, aligning ourselves with what we want to manifest in our world. Bruce Lipton also says that 70% of our thoughts are negative. So think about that. 70% of the thoughts that you think are negative. Sometimes I catch myself having a negative thought, and I ask, where did that thought come from? I'm sure you've had that same experience. So if 70% of our thoughts are negative, that's you, that's me, that's the whole world is having that experience. And that can explain why there's chaos in our world, why we are facing so many problems because there's so much negative thought and negative energy. So we want to move into using conscious prayer because this conscious prayer, this awareness prayer, this positive prayer influences our health and our life experiences. Again, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. What we focus on, we bring into our reality. So if we're bringing in more positive thoughts, if we're changing our thinking and opening ourselves up to seeing ourselves healthy and well in our physical body and community, but also in our greater community, we can bring those positive experiences into our lives. So programming the subconscious mind takes effort. That 5% of the creative mind just naturally is positive and creative and has all of these great ideas. But in order to have your subconscious mind align with those creative thoughts, that 5%, you need that 95% of your subconscious mind to reprogram and align with what you want to manifest. So it takes time. It takes effort to reprogram. We have to start by speaking positive words in the present tense. So he gives a really great example. Um, he says, don't say, I don't want cancer. Because that's a thought we're all thinking. We don't want cancer. We don't want COVID. We don't want anything. But he said, instead, affirm, I am healthy. Say positively, I am healthy. And this is very, very important because what we affirm with energy begins to change our programming. So he goes on to say, um, don't say, I want to be healthy. Don't say, I'm seeking health. Because that sounds like we're not sure that we'll ever get there. Instead, we need to say, I am healthy. Even if in your life you feel sick, you feel ill, 
affirm, I am healthy. Because the program of putting positive affirmations into your subconscious will engage the healing response that matches the mind as it's been programmed, that wish that you have for health. So again, our creative conscious mind, that 5% can change easily. It's the subconscious that needs the work. So what can you do to reprogram your subconscious mind? Bruce Lipton offers us three, uh, what he calls, fundamental processes. And he says the first one might be called hypnosis, but it's really not someone being hypnotized so much as listening to positive affirmations. He suggests that before you fall asleep at night, put on your headphones and program into your mind as you're falling asleep positive ideas and affirmations. He says the second thing to do is to repeat for yourself a belief or a statement. For example, you might say, I am healthy, whole, and well. And you say this in a way that it resonates the vibration and the energy that resonates so that your thoughts connect with this energy and you're able to bring this energy into your physical body and being and bring forth greater wellness. Here's a third step, um, and it's a program that teaches you to look at your life, to focus on what you want to experience, and it's all about muscle testing. You've probably done that where you say something and you test your arm to see if it moves up or down, and that tells you whether your programming supports what you are thinking. And it also tells you where you need to reprogram. There are physical exercises and other things that you can do, and that's something that's a little more complicated. But I think that we can start more so with listening to affirmations, with saying affirmations, and saying them with energy and with feeling and affirming for ourselves so that not only do we hear it in our conscious mind, but we hear it deep down in our subconscious and that our subconscious mind aligns with what we're saying. You see, there's a computer, that subconscious mind. It's doing so many things for us automatically. But it also picks up a lot of information from the time we we're small until the age of seven. We just get a lot of programming. And we have to unprogram ourselves. So the subconscious computer will be reprogrammed to support your wishes and your desires when you follow those steps. So as individuals and our own community, we want to change ourselves, reprogram ourselves, but we really need to also program our greater community. Our body with its 50 trillion cells, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind need to be reprogrammed. They are how we show up in life. And if you're showing up in life in ways that you don't want to show up in life, if opportunities are coming your way and you're not willing or able somehow to engage with anything new, then you need to think about this process of reprogramming your life so that you can outpicture in your life what you truly and really desire. Because if our thoughts are 70% negative, then we need to get to work with some reprogramming, especially of our subconscious mind, and using the steps of prayer and meditation, positive affirmation, or even investing in doing some more professionally-led reprogramming. There are people, I'm sure, that are in, like Bruce Lipton, he offers a certain... Uh, uh, opportunity for people to go through a reprogramming with him. But we want to be able to change our personal programming so that we can promote greater health and success as an individual, because everything always starts with us. We want our mind, our body, our being to have a healthy 
uh, expression in the world and our life to draw to us positive life experiences. So we have a part to play in our own individual lives, but we also have a part to play in the community of humanity. We also need to be mindful of our own programming and whether it limits our ability to foster change in our local, national, and global community. We talk a lot about change and wanting things to change, but it really all starts with us. We have to be the ones that are willing to change our programming and how our programming can affect our local, national, and global community in a more positive way. Bruce Lipton says, the more the cells in your body or community work together, the more powerful and healthy the whole system becomes. So what's driving the disharmony in our world? We want more harmony in our world, but that requires individual and collective reprogramming. A spiritualization of our sub conscious, really allowing the spiritual principles and the teachings that we know and practice to seep down into our subconscious. Because in our subconscious, that's where we store those thoughts of fear, thoughts of prejudice, thoughts of bias against others. But in the same way that we are using positive thoughts to make our bodies more healthy, we also can use our positive thoughts to bring about change in our community. We create positive thoughts about others. We work to weed out responses that have no basis in actual experience. We look at all people as being a part of our spiritual community. Like the scripture says, we are all a part of the one. We are members of the one spiritual body, the family of God. We all have a part to play in the spiritual global community. And reprogramming is happening, but it happens faster when a collective, when we as a collective create a welcome for all of our members. So after chaos, we want to move into acknowledging and building greater community. It's so important post-election, there are things we need to put aside and think about the whole and work toward uniting our whole community. Everyone is important. Everyone is needed. Everyone has a gift or a skill or an ability something that can be contributed to moving our future forward into greater harmony in our world. So I remarked about, um, in thinking about programming and reprogramming, um, I wanted to just mention, as you all know, that history was made in the election last week. Kamala Harris, a woman of African, Asian, Indian descent, became the first woman and the first woman of color to be vice president-elect, and that took years of programming. You see, many people have believed that a woman could not be president. But if you go back in history, in Shirley Chisholm was the first woman and the first African-American woman elected to the United States Congress. And she served for seven terms, but she was also the first woman and the first African-American woman to ever run for the office of president. We know that Hillary Clinton ran in 2016, and she actually won the popular vote. And this is the result of the programming of our whole society moving forward, so that we're getting the vision that the possibility exists for a woman to be president in this United States of America. This says to girls of color and girls of all ethnicities that they can become a woman of power and of character to hold such an important position as the president of the United States. But we need greater harmony in our world. 
We need to reprogram and make room for and create space for all the members of our community and society to be a part of lending and serving and giving from what they have to really bring more harmony, more peace, and more progress into our world. Like the body, as it heals, we express positive thoughts, actions, and ideas to heal our global community. We must look past differences and see our city, nation, and world as one big community. With so many members, we need them to share their gifts. We want to create and promote a world that works for all. So we want our community of cells in our physical body to be working in harmony, living in harmony, and expressing health. And in the same way, we want our community to live in harmony, to express help for all people. Again, I remind you of Bruce Lipton's words. He said that health issues are a sign that our cellular community is not in harmony. And that is a great metaphor for what is happening globally. We need to bring about greater harmony to heal the global community of COVID and injustice. We need to reprogram our limited views that stop us from working for harmony in the world. And in closing, I'd like to say that every change first starts with the individual. By changing their programming and realizing that they are not separate, that they are a member of the community, and that their gifts are needed and welcomed, then we can work to heal the community. So I invite you to start reprogramming your subconscious mind today with positive prayer, affirming what you want in the world. Affirm we are one family. Pray we are one family. And as you affirm and pray for this, you will attract into your life circumstances and opportunities that manifest what you have affirmed. We are one family. Thank you, God, for bringing us into, from the chaos into a greater sense of community, into a greater sense of welcoming and willingness to change. For surely we all can change and reprogram ourselves. I behold the Christ in you. Namaste. So thank you for joining us today in our second um, in sanctuary virtual service. <laughs> We're all alive here, but you all are watching us on the screen and we so appreciate your uh, attendance and your love for unity. And so this is the time when we would be doing our offering. Um, and I want you, if you have your checkbook beside you, just write out a check to Unity of Kalamazoo or go online and make your contribution. It truly is appreciated. And I'll just affirm our offertory blessing because it's not only a blessing of prosperity based on what you give, it's a blessing for you and your life. And so we know that through divine love, blesses and multiplies, all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And we are blessed for all that you are, all that you have, all that you give, and all that we give to you and we receive in return. And now we'll have our offering song. This song first was released in 1988 at a time during uh, Reaganomics when there was a great deal of disparity and just put forth as a musical message, a call for action, a fervent plea for attention and a revolution in politics. And today we see so many of the same things and it, if there's something we can really impact, it's a revolution in consciousness in which we truly believe the words that Reverend Mason was sharing with us, the core principle of the oneness of humanity, and then truly to call forth a revolution in consciousness to get us there. This is Tracy Chapman.
Don't you know you're talking about revolution and it sounds like a whisper? Don't you know you're talking about revolution and it sounds Standing in the welfare lines Crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation Wasting time in the unemployment lines Sitting around waiting for a promotion Don't you know they're talking about it sounds like a whisper Poor people gonna rise up And get their share Oh yeah, the people gonna rise up And take what's theirs Don't you know you're gonna run, run, run Starting to turn, talking about a revolution. Finally, the tables are starting to turn. We're talking about a revolution. Oh, now, talking about a revolution. Ooh, while they're standing in welfare lines, crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation, wasting time. Employment lines sitting around waiting for a solution. <laughs> Don't you know they're talking about revolution? It sounds like a whisper. And finally, the tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution It's finally the tables are starting to turn Talking about a revolution Oh, hold on Talking about a revolution Oh, hold on Talking about a revolution So thank you, Carolyn and John, because we do need a revolution in our programming, realizing that we are all one and there is no need for anyone ever to suffer because there is indeed more than enough in this world. And so as we bring our service to a close, we want to uh, have you stand at home um, and we're going to say our prayer for protection together and then we'll have our peace song and some closing music, and then we will be done for today. And so, let us affirm together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Yay, God! And now we move in for our peace song and have peace in your heart today. Let peace spread from you to the people in your home, but also hold our world and all of the people working to get this, this vaccine uh, together for use in the future. Just let's just pray for the best possible outcomes for all concerned. on her and let it begin with me let there be peace on the peace that was meant to be with God as creator family are we 
let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now with every step I take. So go forth today blessed, happy, and whole, knowing that you are healthy, you are well, and you are prosperous. God bless.